I'm Dr. Mark Bowman, Assistant Professor of Justice Studies at Methodist University. I frequently conduct tours at the Guilford Courthouse National Military Park. In those tours, we typically examine the events of the battle that occurred here on March 15, 1781, from a leadership perspective. We could examine the events that occurred here in 1781 simply from the perspective of leadership exhibited by people like General Nathaniel Green or his principal opponent, Lord Cornwallis. However, there's another context which is much more important to the law enforcement profession. Here beside the statue of General Nathaniel Green is a statue that commemorates the three North Carolinians who were signatories to the Declaration of Independence. Those three signatories were William Hooper, Joseph Hayes, and John Penn. The American Revolution was more than a war. It was an event that changed the course of human history. In the 18th century, the idea that government derived its power from the governed was a radical idea. And in many parts of the world, it is still a radical idea today. Outside of verses in the Bible or the Quran, probably the most read passages have come from our Declaration of Independence. In that declaration, Mr. Jefferson and others stated that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Two of our unalienable rights, life and the pursuit of happiness, are easy to understand. The concept of liberty, though, is perhaps a bit more complex. Note that Mr. Jefferson didn't use the word freedom. The word freedom was commonly used in the 18th century, but liberty means something different than freedom. In a free society, I can drive on whichever side of the road I choose. In a society that has ordered liberties, we can have faith that when we're traveling over a hill, that if we stay in the right-hand lane, that those people coming from the other side of the hill will be doing the same. One of the tensions that has always existed in America has been our balance between freedom and security. And therein lies the concept of liberty. During the years leading up to the ratification of our Constitution, there was much debate about what form our national government would take. In Federalist Number 51, Madison discussed the issue of power and justice. Madison stated that justice is the end of government and that government should pursue justice until liberty be lost in the pursuit. It's critical that law enforcement officers understand that our powers are constrained, purposely so, and that yes, that makes us to some degree less safe. But we have decided in this nation that we would prefer that to less liberty. I believe that these concepts should serve as the touchstone for the law enforcement profession. Our powers are purposely constrained, and while it's difficult at times to accept, we need to recognize that that constraint is what distinguishes America from many other parts of the world. Many of us as law enforcement officers have been to classes about cultural sensitivity or racial profiling. While well-intentioned, I believe these efforts have been ineffective. I believe they've been ineffective because they've ignored the principle of mastery. Mastery of any skill or ability is usually the execution or application of fundamental principles in a consistent manner. The fundamental skill that law enforcement officers must consistently exercise is maintaining that balance between just and unjust powers. While that may be difficult to determine at times, if our focus stays steadfast on that point, we will most always succeed.